Hello, my name is Henrik Schulze. I am Associate Professor for Music History at the University of North Texas. And I'm a Crescendo member at the Dallas-Fort Worth Hub. Thank you for tuning in to this broadcast. I will introduce this work, Haydn's Seven Last Words of Our Savior on the, on the Cross. Uh, and uh, we'll talk a little bit about the music that you are going to experience in this concert. Haydn composed the seven last words in 1786 or 1787 for the oratorio of the cathedral in Cadiz in Spain. Before we can talk about the music, a few words on the context of this work. Haydn was a devout Christian of Roman Catholic confession, and as such, his composition seems to have had a special significance for him. It is important to know that this is not liturgical music. Rather, it is meant for a type of public devotion that is very specific to the Roman Catholic Church, the so-called oratorio. This term connotes a place where devotional gatherings could take place free from the strict constraints of the Latin liturgy. Building on successful Protestant practices, oratorios offered the Roman Catholic Church an opportunity to draw in the masses of the faithful with sermons and vocal sacred music in their own vernacular languages rather than in Latin. The musical genre of the oratorio was initially conceived of for exactly this purpose. It is rather unusual to have purely instrumental music in this context. In the case of the seven last words, there would be sermons on the meaning of each individual word before each movement. And the music would then serve to accompany individual prayer and contemplation. Haydn's music is highly evocative and almost theater-like to help envisage the situation and suggest certain topics for contemplation. It does not contain music that represents the words themselves, but rather images and reflections on those words. You will especially hear two motifs appear again and again in various forms. The first is what I would call the cross motif, consisting of a juxtaposition of downward and upward intervals. Da, 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 quite literally forming the shape of the cross. And the second one is what I would call the nail motif, repeated staccato notes symbolizing the act of crucifixion. Tuck, 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 tuck. These motifs will run through several variations over the course of the work. First sounding terrible and menacing, but ending peacefully and quiet. A clear theological message of hope. The seven last words turned out to be an extremely popular and, uh, work, and we have several versions of this turned into a musical oratorio with added texts underlaid. In discussing each individual movement, I will now occasionally reference the text of Haydn's own oratorio version, as it will help to establish context. The first movement is called Introduction. The, the music of this movement immediately starts like a theater piece. It has two different iterations of the cross motif. You will hear a cross motif with extremely extended intervals right at the beginning in the first violin. This is setting the scene of the crucifixion. The music represents then the nailing to the cross with those repeated staccato notes in various instruments as well as the physical pain endured by Christ on the cross, 
uh, symbolized through dissonance and descending melodic lines. Um, this music gets interrupted by short contrasting passages of soft, sweet music. Rather surprising for this topic, perhaps, but I think they are meant to symbolize Christ's persistent love, even in this ordeal. The second movement, the so-called Sonata One, is on the text, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they are doing. Luke 23, verse 34. It has a slow song-like melody representing Christ's love and forgiveness. This is con contrasted with um, almost uh, background music uh, in, uh, in other parts, uh, uh, showing the sinful action that we already know from the, uh, uh, from the introduction, the nailing, the pain, the cross motif, um, symbolizing the crucifixion. The movement ends in a peaceful mood. The second sonata is on the verse, Verily I say unto you, today you will dwell with me in paradise. Luke 23, 43. This movement also starts with the cross motif and nailing as a matter of situational awareness. Then a sweet song-like section representing grace and charity reacting to the murderous expression of faith that initial initiated Christ's words here. The later oratorio text also mentions the hope of redemption for every individual sinner, putting us in place of that murderer. The prayer for which may be represented in the middle part of the movement, the development section. The movement ends again with the melody that was representing charity at the beginning. The third sonata is on the words, woman, behold your son, and you, behold your mother, from John 19, 26 to 27. Rather than representing the actual uh, scene here, uh, apparently Haydn goes with an allusion to another uh, piece of sacred music, the Stabat Mater, the image of the mother of God weeping under the cross. We see the cross motif and also the love of Christ represented in the melody of the first violin, whereas Mary's pain uh, is represented in rather dissonant sounding uh, uh, um, the phrases in the cello. This has a, a, a effect of, 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 of a picture-like representation. We see the space. Christ is above in the violin, Mary standing below the cross, weeping. The oratorio takes this as a prayer to Mary for, uh, for help to stay steadfast in Christ. And we can see actually this happening in the music. Haydn takes the nailing motif, those repeated staccato notes, and making it sound harmoniously and thus less, less menacing, but uh, still through those repeats, very, very steadfast. The sonata number four is on the words, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? This is citing both Psalm 22, verse 1, and Matthew 27, verse 46. I found, when I looked at this for, for the first time, I found really remarkable the use of key here. This movement is in F minor, the key of death and hopelessness and extreme anguish. However, if you listen to this, the music does not seem to express those characteristics. Rather, it seems more contemplative, almost as if 
the musicians themselves are discussing among them the meanings of those words. And you will hear that we're constantly moving from motivic material that sounds harsh and dissonant to more sweet sounding material, which um, I would interpret as negative thoughts are constantly turned into positive ones. Doubt is turned into, into certainty. So rather than sounding forsaken, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? This is creating hope. The oratorio version expresses first amazement at the mystery of Christ's suffering and then turns this into thankfulness for his sacrifice and a uh, 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 and contemplation about avoiding sin. Sonata number five is on the words, I thirst. This is John 19, 28. We have a rather evocative way of expressing thirst at the, right at the beginning of the movement. We have pizzicato in second violin, viola, and cello that sounds very dry. And then it's sort of the forlorn, just two-tone motif in the, in the first violin um, depicting thirst. But then we move in with a second theme with nailing and cross motif again, which demonstrate that this is torture, not just ordinary thirst that could be quenched with a bottle of water. The movement then turns again into contemplation and ends on a positive note. The oratorio here has a longish text that is basically a call for compassion to everybody. Sonata number six is on the words, it is finished. John 19, 30. Here we have new forms of the cross motif at the very beginning of the movement. Not, not anymore any large leaps, but stepwise, still being the cross motif. Much slower, not as abrupt as we've had heard it before. This motif then gets taken up in all four parts uh, and developed as if they are discussing among themselves again the impact of the cross. It's a fugue-like treatment uh, which serves as a reference to the seriousness of the discussion. Once again, this turns into hopeful, upbeat music interrupted by more sections of contemplation and culminating in an extremely positive reprise. The ending is in G major instead of the initial G minor, symbolizing the glory of the cross rather than the, uh, the, the shame and, and, uh, and horror of the cross that we've heard at the beginning. The oratorio text turns this into self-reflection on our own sinfulness, underscoring the need for atonement. This is perhaps the most Catholic part of the oratorio, although I have to say that I can't, don't quite find uh, this supported in the, in the music here. The oratorio text was written much later than the music itself, so um, there might not, there might have been a misunderstanding between poet and composer here. Sonata number seven is on the words, Father, into your hands I command my spirit. This is a calm, song-like melody expressing faith in God's love. The nailing motif and the cross motif have become peaceful and harmless in the musical context. You will still hear them, but they sound sweet and subdued. Allusions to pastoral music appear in drones, for instance, that imitate music of shepherds, thus declaring Christ to be the Lamb of God. 
The coda of this movement has a diminuendo, uh, the music getting softer and softer, uh, representing Christ's peaceful death. The oratorio text here celebrates the mystery of Christ's sacrifice and offers the hearts of the individual believers as a sacrifice in return to Christ, as an expression of faith. The quartet ends with another really evocative movement, the earthquake. I was wondering why uh, Haydn chose that part of the crucifixion story rather than, for instance, the, 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 the rupture of the, uh, 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 of, of, the, um, the, of the curtain in the temple. And I think there is a connection here to be made to another work of Haydn's, the Oratorio, the Creation, which starts with a similarly evocative representation of chaos. The earthquake here is a sign that God's plan is finished. Verily, it is finished. Thank you and enjoy the concert.